Tonight, we're learning more about the process the Board of Trustees for the University of South Carolina took in selecting Bob Caslin as the next president of the university. Our Lauren Thomas has been reading through the documents since yesterday, mainly emails and text messages trying to get to the bottom of all of this. What did you find? Well, JR, as you can see, we got uh, more than a thousand documents from the University of South Carolina. And in that time, what we learned is that the board was attempting, uh, board members were attempting to sway others to vote their way. It was almost as if uh, they were forming alliances, like something you would see on Big Brother. But in the end, they were divided ahead of that vote for Robert Caslin. Right, on July 19th, uh, to elect General Cashman, uh, was approved. 11 trustees voted to approve the selection of retired General Robert Caslin as the next president of the University of South Carolina. Eight voted against, and one voted as present. The vote was controversial. Shame, shame, Some students, shame. faculty, and alumni were concerned with having Caslin as the next president of the university. This is a disgrace to our university. Several board members agreed and believe that a vote for Caslin, heavily supported by Governor McMaster, would bring politics into the decision. According to documents that we requested through the Freedom of Information Act, text messages revealed that Governor McMaster reached out to board members for their support in voting for Caslin. Like this text on June 28th saying, Rose, this is Henry McMaster. I'd like to speak to you about General Caslin. Please call when you have a moment. This text to Dan Adams, who was appointed to the board by the governor, saying, I fully support any and all efforts to hire General Caslin. And this text from Thad Westbrook to Vice Chair Hugh Mobley saying, Henry is willing to do anything else we need to recruit Caslin. Trustee Charles Williams was very vocal about his concerns with the retired general and worked to lobby no votes for Caslin. Two weeks before the vote, Williams reached out to board member Leah Moody, believing 10 people would vote no, saying, I'm trying to get in touch with John Von Leahy, and I've been talking with Gene War and may be able to swing him. He goes on to say, I think Thad, Hugh, William, and Mac, and the two morons appointed by the governor are a waste of time. Williams also reached out to Superintendent of Education Molly Spearman, saying in a text, Caslin is controversial and not the right choice. We need your vote to prevent this from happening. Spearman replied saying that she spoke to Caslin and was especially interested in his commitment to public education and his thoughts on how the university should be involved with supporting teachers and students from rural and high poverty areas. Other board members also spoke with Caslin ahead of the vote, like Adams, who said in a text, as of this minute, I believe we have more than enough votes. Ultimately, that was correct, and Caslin was selected 11 to 8. I want to give you a better idea of what Lauren has gone through. This is more than a thousand pieces of paper here. Right. Th this is all correspondence between members of the Board of Trustees, correct? Correct. And this is from the beginning of the year to their a decision that was made on July 19th to vote for Bob Caslin. Um, but the board, you know, moving forward, mm -hmm. they want to, they, they were discouraged by the divisiveness. <laughs> right. and, and so they want to move forward and figure out the best way um, to regain their leadership and bring that back uh, to what they right. were once. Uh, before, you know, all this happened. But again, clearly a lot of discussion, at least going on with emails, right. as far as this process is right. concerned. Right, emails and text messages all throughout yeah. uh, the beginning of the year to now. All right, Lauren, thank you so much for going through all that for us.